These mothers are one building block in North Carolina's efforts to strengthen the state's early care and learning network. Their path to family-based community leadership began with something many parents can relate to. They were simply looking for resources for the young children. Marilyn's journey started when she began looking for activities to do with a young daughter in her Rockingham County community. I was a stay-at-home mom for the first time and I wanted to find different things that I could do with Kalila. I just had one at the time. So then I Googled free stuff in North Carolina and that's when the Partnership for Children came up. We definitely need more stuff for children here. Like infants, toddlers, there's not enough. You have to drive out to Greensboro to get more access to those resources. Her search led her to Rockingham County's Family Leadership Advisory Council. And before long, she became a leader herself, working and advocating on behalf of the families of Eaton, North Carolina. I think of parents who either don't speak the language. I think of parents that don't know how to connect to the resources. So if I can bridge that gap a little bit, then I, I am more than willing to be in that space. Allison's involvement in family leadership started through her local Smart Start in Johnston County. Smart Start is part of a statewide network that supports children and families from birth to five years. She was looking for services for her family and soon saw an opportunity to play a bigger role in her community. My main goal was to um, express parent voice, you know, give my perspectives of my experiences on some good and not so good at the county level, kind of uh, wanting to make sure that uh, parent voice was a part of some of the policies. While Marilyn and Allison were engaged at the county level, a parallel process was taking place at the state level. Alexandra Morris leads statewide family engagement and leadership efforts for the North Carolina Division of Child Development and Early Education. We realized that in order to better uh, serve the families of North Carolina, that we needed to ask them how to improve our services and system. So we're really honoring the idea that to do good family engagement includes uh, really robust family leadership and making sure that we are welcoming those families to the table uh, as decision makers alongside the, us as professionals and providers. One of Alexandra's roles is co-facilitating the Family Engagement and Leadership Coalition, or FALC. FALC brings together family leaders like Marilyn and Allison and early childhood professionals from across the state. The Family Engagement and Leadership Coalition is exciting to me because it's an opportunity for the early childhood sectors to come together. Uh, we don't always talk to one another enough. We, we're sometimes siloed. So we can come together and align our approach to making sure we're welcoming families to the table and really embedding family voice in the design of our service systems. One of the coalition's first tasks was to develop the North Carolina Early Childhood Family Engagement and Leadership Framework. This framework defines and identifies best practices for family engagement and leadership for agencies and organizations. The goal? to recreate the way services for young children and their families are designed and to center the voices of families in programs and services. It's what Alexandra and members of the FELT call doing with, not for, families. There's a reciprocal relationship that can parents can come in with their ideas, their thoughts, their on the ground ideas of what needs to be and policymakers can hear those things and really be dialed into what's happening day to day and make policies and procedures that will have the most impact. The framework is informing other family engagement and leadership activities across North Carolina, and this work is gaining momentum and generating excitement. To build family leaders' advocacy and leadership skills, the state recently held its second virtual early childhood leadership conference and also developed a training on best practices in family engagement and leadership. One of the things that we've put together is a training called Welcoming Family Leaders to the Table. And Welcoming Families to the Table is there to help providers really think about how to meaningfully partner with parents and honor them as the lived experience experts that they are. 
A cohort of trainers, including Maryland and other family leaders, is busy delivering this training to service providers, including early care and learning professionals working with families across the state. Fourteen North Carolina counties have also launched family advisory councils to increase and improve family engagement efforts in their communities. At a recent FALC meeting, participants celebrated the changes they're seeing in their communities. Family leaders celebrated their community's efforts to connect more families to services like child care, early intervention, and parenting education. Family leaders are now board members and presenters at early learning conferences, and they're bringing people with lived experience to the table, like in Columbus County. I'm Dave American. I represent the Wakamaa Siwan tribe in Clayton, Columbus County. And it is great honor to have in Columbus County nationalities and representation at our table. Family leaders are also feeling an impact in their own lives. Marilyn's journey led her all the way to Washington, D.C. to speak to North Carolina legislators about her town's urgent need for access to early care and learning. Her work as a family leader has also influenced her career path. I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives at the Partnership for Children. I also work with Child Trends as a community researcher, and I work with NC100 as a community and capacity support associate. Through her family leadership work, Allison has been inspired to get more involved in making change in her community. I was privileged to speak before our county commissioners in Johnson County, speaking on behalf of the partnership for additional funding in the next fiscal year. Experiencing these personal and community level changes is empowering. I think there are groups of people who are doing things that aren't always connected to each other through any ongoing conduits of communication. So that's what really uh, inspires me. It's like if I can just email someone or call them or send them a number to get them connected, there's a lot of parents out there who have a lot of good things to say. And once they know the person to connect with, then their voices can be heard too. I feel very honored because I feel like, one, I get to represent Hispanic families, families that don't speak English. And I feel like I, I'm hoping that it gives other parents hope that they're not just stay-at-home parents, that they do have a voice, that their voice is important. That's what one of the things that we've learned is that when families speak, folks will listen. Um, we just need to prepare those families to be the advocates that they can be. Family engagement and leadership, a building block that ensures families of young children in North Carolina have a voice and a seat at the table.